Are you ready for .NET 8? Let's upgrade. I'll need .NET 8 to use those new identity endpoints to register, authenticate and authorize a user. It includes stateless bearer token authentication and even an endpoint to refresh that token. All of this can potentially save me a lot of time since I used to do it all myself. I'll start with upgrading the project and applying the changes I'll have to make to my Blazor projects. First thing you'll want to do is download the .NET 8 version for your operating system. Once that's installed, uh, close your terminal, reopen it if you had it already open and then you can type in .NET list SDKs and you should see .NET 8 in there. Since I can't find the official documentation yet, I'm going to use one of Daniel Roth's repositories about Blazor WebAssembly in .NET 8. This contains all the steps for me to take. So the first step is to upgrade all of these to .NET 8, so all the project files, and of course, upgrade the packages of Microsoft to its .NET 8 version. Let's try this update all in solution. That seems to have worked. Let's take a look at the upgrade for Blazor.NET 8. So there's a lot of new ways to do things in Blazor. You've got like three render modes, the server render mode, the auto render mode, the streaming render mode, and then I think the WebAssembly render mode, so that's four. But luckily for us, for our pre-rendering setup, there's not too much to change, just to follow these steps and we're done. So we don't have an index.html anymore since we're pre-rendering. So I think I'll have to change the host.cshtml living in the pre in the server project. I'll have to move that to the client project and call it host.razor. So let's, I think only the HTML is what we need. Delete this file. and create the host.razor and the client project. And I'll have to change this to blazor.web.js, so just like that. Replace the title tag, which I don't have anymore, but it's probably gonna be this one I'll have to change to at outlets. So I can remove these, I think. Or should I keep the render mode? Just like that. And then I have this one, I'll have to change. I change that one to the app component with the render mode. It's telling me to remove the head tag, but we already did that since uh, we're pre-rendering. Let's head over to the server program CS and try things there. So on this add razor pages, we can do add web assembly components. And the reason it's not picking up is because I'm missing a package, which is a bit odd. Oh no, I do seem to have it. Thought it was this one. Um, let's see. Aha, uh -huh, it's not Razor Pages, it's add Razor Components. Next is remove this Razor Blazor framework files. And we're going to have to change this one to map razor components and target the host.razor from the client project. 
and now I have to add the render mode, add web assembly render mode, and we're done. Almost done. Apparently, I have to leave out this use routing, otherwise, we're getting anti forgery errors, and then we have to include that middleware. So let's just leave it out, and then we have this nice broken page. Let's have a look, there seems to be some pre-rendering going on. Uh, it seems to be all there, that's good. And that broken CSS seems to be because of this. So that should be better. We're upgraded to .NET 8. Let's have a look of our metrics. 34 seems to be working fine. Page source. Everything is there. That's good. So pre-rendering is working. Okay, so now that we're at .NET 8, we can use those identity endpoints, which will be awesome. Make sure to subscribe to not miss the next episode where we'll tackle authentication. And don't forget to like the video if you're excited about .NET 8.